Good day everyone and once again we're back together. We are still looking at that Timpumalanga question paper and uh, in this case we're going to be looking at uh, electrodynamics. So if you haven't subscribed please just make sure that you're part of this family. All right and uh, of course you can always always get in touch with us. Uh, you know all our contacts are in the description of this video. And uh, of course, uh, at the end of this lesson, please just like and share, okay? Uh, tell as many people that your favorite uncle is always a plug when it comes to maths and physics. All right, now let's get going with the question. They say the diagram below okay, shows a simple electric motor, right? So please note in this case, we've, we're given a motor. They said what energy conversion takes place in an electric motor or in electric motors please note in this case that um, you know all motors convert electrical energy so you must remember that they connect they convert electrical energy uh, to mechanical energy right uh, just think of a car right a car has a battery and uh, you know that uh, con uh, or rather that uh, has electricity in it and in this case, it would convert electrical energy into movement, which is mechanical energy. All right. Now, uh, going into the next question, they say what type of electrical motor, AC or DC, is illustrated in this diagram? Okay. So you see there that you've got, uh, in this case, what we call uh, split rings, right? Uh, so right there next to your brushes, you've got your split rings. And they are not full rings like this, right? So when we've got split rings, so remember that in this case, that would be a DC motor. But uh, I want you to please remember. So when you've got your split rings, I always just try and remember it this way. You know, uh, when you've got split rings, it looks like a C and a D. So that would be DC, right? So of course, uh, if you've got your full rings, then you know it's going to be AC. So in this case, uh, to answer that question, so it would be a DC motor. They say, give a reason for your answer, All right? Because we've got uh, split rings in this case. Um, yeah, because of the use uh, of split rings. Of split rings, okay, right. Um, Next question, they say, uh, explain the function of carbon brushes. Uh, please remember that uh, what carbon brushes do is that they ensure that there's electrical contact uh, going to the armature, right? So uh, in this case, they just provide an ele uh, for electrical. Or you can say they ensure that current uh, is able to flow into the armature, right? So they, uh, that's electrical contact, or in this case, uh, for flow of current into the armature, flow of current, all right? So that's the function of a brush. Right, now they ask us to which terminal of the power source, positive or negative, uh, is the brush labeled P connected if the coil rotates clockwise. Now, I want you to please remember, ladies and gents, when it comes to the rotation, so it means if I'm looking at this side here, if it is moving clockwise, it means that uh, in this case, um, it is going or it is moving upwards on the side, right? Now, I want you to think about it. So we know that the direction of the field will always be north to south. So remember, when you're using your fingers in this case, we know that the thumb would be pointed upwards, right? It means that your forefinger, this means your first finger would be... Um, uh, so remember, because this is an electrical motor, please remember that you're supposed to use your left hand, right? So I know that my thumb is pointed upwards. Please remember your, 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 uh, you know, your right hand rule. I mean, your left hand rule in this case. So my left hand is up and so my thumb is pointed upwards. My, thing, uh, my first finger is pointed to the left. And you'll see if you place your, your fingers at right hand to each other, uh, your uh, second finger would actually be pointed uh, in this direction. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I'm not able to uh, 
uh, you know, just, uh, of course, all your other fingers would still be curled up. Uh, your favorite uncle cannot draw. Ne? Uh, so in this case, my thumb is pointed upwards, first finger to the left, okay, or rather to the right. And then my um, current, uh, or rather in this case, my second finger would be pointed towards me. So in this case, I want you to note. So what does that mean? It means current on this side is going in that direction. Okay. Now, if you remember that current always flows from positive to negative, right? So it means in this case, that would be my positive side. Okay. This one is pointed to my positive side, meaning this side is my negative side. So it means that this would be negative. I hope that that made sense to you. Okay. Uh, since we remember that we use conventional current. Okay. Right. Now, they say to you, name and explain the, prin the basic principle uh, on which motors work. Okay. So in this case, I want you to please remember that you, you, when you think of a motor, okay, um, or rather, uh, um, so the principle that they use is what they call uh, the motor effect, okay? That's the principle of physics that it uses, right? So motors use what we call the motor effect. And, oh, please, I'm not going to write all of this down. They said explain it. Um, so essentially, uh, you know, a wire that carries current creates a magnetic field. So anytime that you've got a wire that has current in it, all right, creates a magnetic field around, okay? And of course, if that magnetic field, if the fields interact with each other, they cause a force, all right, that pushes the wire at right angle, okay? So once the field pushes or, or rather interact with each other, they create a force that pushes the field at right hand. Okay, that's the simple explanation. I hope that you'll be able to remember that. Right, now the next question, they say an electrical appliance with a power rating of 2000 watts. Now, please, I want you to remember the moment you are given, okay, so that's 9.6. The moment you're given a, a power rating, uh, in this case, just keep in mind that's going to be your average power. So the average power for this motor is 2000 watts. They're saying it's connected to uh, 230. So they give us VRMS as 230 volts. Okay. Um, they say household main supply. Uh, so first of all, they want us to calculate the peak or maximum voltage. So remember, we know that we uh, um, say uh, 9.6.1. So we know that VRMS is equal to V max, the maximum voltage divided by the square root of two. Okay, so what it means is that now I want V max. Okay, my V RMS value is 230 uh, V max divided by root two. So obviously, what will I do? I, I cross multiply uh, to get V max. So V max would be equal to V max times one is V max 230 times root two. Uh, so that's 230 uh, and 30 multiplied by square root of 2 and that would simply give us okay so that's 230 multiplied by the square root of 2 and that gives me 325.27 okay volts okay that's my peak voltage all right so the next question they say calculate the the RMS current okay passing through the appliance Okay, so remember that you given your, uh, so that's 9.6.2. My power, my average power is always VRMS multiplied by IRMS. But remember, you've, you've got the other formulae, which is uh, VRMS squared over, uh, uh, over R. And then you also have uh, IRMS squared multiplied by R, right? Uh, but in this case, I'm choosing this one because I, I already have VRMS. I've got the average power, so it means I can easily get my IRMS value. So that's going to be 230 times IRMS. And so to divide by 230, in this case, I have, okay, so that's 2000 uh, divided by 230. 
and I've got a current RMS current value of 8.69 um, so we can actually say 8.7 uh, if you don't mind because uh, obviously uh, we'd have to round off the uh, round off in this case so 8.7 amperes of current are passing through there all right so uh, the last one they say calculate the resistance of the appliance right so we can use the other power uh, equation or formula um, so I'm simply going to say, well, P average once again is going to be, if you don't mind, I'm going to use the one with the uh, RMS uh, voltage, V RMS squared over R. Nothing wrong with using I RMS, uh, the one that you've calculated, but I mean, just in case we did something wrong there. Uh, so I'm going to say this is 2000 is v rms squared remember that's 230 that's squared divided by r okay so now we're going to cross multiply so that means you'll have 2000 r which is equal to 230 squared okay and of course you can divide by 2000 on both sides to get your value for r okay so the resistance um nothing wrong there 230 squared uh okay i uh, just did something there 230 squared divided by 2000 and i get a value of 26.45 ohms that's my resistance uh nothing wrong if you decided to use p average uh which is equal to i rms squared multiplied by r of course, you had that 8.7 value, okay? And remember, you had 2,000 there. Uh, you should be able to get the same answer. So that's 8.7 squared, okay? That cancels with that, but what I do on the left, I do on the right, okay? And just to verify there, we've got 2,000 divided by 8.7 squared and we get more or less the same value uh, 26.42 and of course uh, uh, you know just a slight difference um, is just owed to uh, just rounding off that 8.7 value okay right so that is how you would calculate your value all right please don't forget ladies and gents to just like uh, at the end of this lesson Okay, and uh, hit that like button. And of course, um, you know, uh, if you haven't subscribed, continue. Uh, just go on to that subscription button there. And, um, uh, you know, just recommend, uh, share it to as many people as possible. Tell them that your favorite uncle is continuing to be the plug. Otherwise, ladies and gents, I'll see you again next time. Shop, shop.